very good day, everyone. Welcome to my writing segment. I'm Miss Emma, and you'll be with me today. We are going to learn about an interesting topic that is writing an informal letter or email based on prompts. I'm sure you all know what an informal letter and email look like. But prompts, a prompt as in noun, is a set of directions or a passage from a text to give you ideas for writing something. So let's look at the learning objectives for this lesson so that you are clear and you know what you are going to do. By the end of this lesson, hopefully all of you will be able to number one, identify the purpose of writing a letter or email. Number two, learn how to respond to a certain language function. And number three, write an email using a variety of language functions based on the prompt given. It's going to be an interesting lesson, so I hope you stay tuned till the end of the lesson with me. Let's start our lesson by looking at these phrasal verbs related to travel. I had a really nice time on holiday. I didn't want to come back. Come back means written. We'll set off for Madrid at 9 o'clock and arrive at 10 o'clock. Set off means leave. Take off and touch down are the most dangerous parts of a flight. Take off, depart or start the journey and touch down means the flight lands. Whenever I go on a long journey, my parents come and see me off at the airport, saying goodbye. I'm hungry. Let's have lunch before we look around the town to explore. They spent hours in the hotel bar and ran up a huge bill. It means accumulate. Thank you for booking a room at the Grand Hotel. You can check in after 2 p.m. and check out is before 11 a.m. Check in means start your stay at a hotel and check out when you end your stay there. Phrasal verbs are common in informal English. It helps you sound natural and in casual conversation and also in informal written language. Now, let's start talking about going abroad. If you have the opportunity to visit an English-speaking country, which one would you choose? Would you choose England, the US, Canada or Ireland? I would choose England because I've read so much about that country. Which places in the country that you would like to visit and what activities would you like to do? If I have ever been to England, I would definitely visit London and I would see all the sights there. I would visit the British Museum and I would also eat fish and chips. What about you? Do you have any countries in mind that you dream of travelling to and explore? Let's look at Andrew here. Andrew, who lives in Birmingham, will be visiting Mark's country for a month. Now, if you are going to write an informal letter or email based on prompts, you must have something as the prompt. I'll show you a letter Andrew has written to Mark. We are going to skim through the letter quickly and while reading, you need to identify why is Andrew writing to him. Let's read with me. Dear Mark, guess what? My parents and I are staying at a resort in your country this summer. That means I'll be able to get together, to have a gathering with you and some of the others who were here on the language course last year. It means that Andrew and Mark 
were on the same language course. That's how they meet. I'm so excited to visit Mark's country. We'll be there during the month of August, so I was thinking of paying you a bit a visit on the second weekend in August. Would that be convenient for you? He's asking whether it's a suitable time for him or not. I plan to arrive by train sometime on Friday afternoon and I was wondering if you could recommend a good hostel somewhere near the station. So he's asking suggestion for accommodation. I don't want to be too much of a nuisance. Nuisance means someone that annoys you or causes trouble for you. So we could get together anytime and at any place that is best for you. That's very considerate of him. Just tell me how to get there from the station and I'll find it. He's asking for directions. You probably remember that I'm really into photography. I would really love to get some good shots of nature spots or places of historical interest while I'm there too. So this is what he would like to do while he's visiting Mark. What do you suggest? Well, got to go now. Can't wait to hear from you. Yours, Andrew. So, based on the letter, we know that Andrew is writing to Mark to inform him that he will be visiting his country. He wants to ask him for some information about where to stay, which places to visit, and to make arrangements about where and when to meet. Now, look at the notes that Mark has made here. Me too! No way! Stay with us! Get there on foot. Meet at and must see. What are the functions of these notes? I'll give you four points to indicate what he should include in his reply to Andrew. A. Suggest something. B. Offer accommodation. C. Express enthusiasm. And D. Give directions. Match Mark's notes 1 to 4 to the points A to C. For the first one, Mark writes, Me too on the phrase, I'm so excited. That means he is also eager and can't wait to meet his friend Andrew. So the answer is C, express enthusiasm. No way, stay with us is in response to the sentence if you could recommend a good hostel. Here, Andrew wants him to stay at his house so he wants to offer accommodation. B. Next, get there on foot. Clearly means walking. So the answer is D. Mark must give directions for Andrew to walk from the train station to the meeting place. And for the last two notes, meet at and must see. The answer is A. Suggest something. In his reply, Mark must give suggestions on the place they are going to meet and interesting places for Andrew to take photos of nature. Now, you are going to read Mark's reply based on Andrew's letter as the prompt. Read the email and identify which sentences that correspond or match to his notes. Me too. No way. Stay with us. Get there on foot. Meet at and must see. Read with me. Hi, Andrew. I'm so glad to hear that you will be here in August. He is expressing his enthusiasm to meet him. So this sentence corresponds with this. It's the best time of the year and it's wonderful that we will be able to get together again. 
we won't be on holiday in August and my parents insist that you should stay with us while you are visiting. As you can see here, he's using the same wording as in his notes. We have lots of space and my mother would be very disappointed if you stayed at a hostel. Since you are arriving by train, I suggest that we meet at my father's bakery. This sentence corresponds with this. He is giving suggestion regarding the meeting place. I am usually there on weekday afternoons and it's very close to the station. The main entrance is on Chester Road. Turn left and walk along this road for a bit. Take the second turning on the right into Maple Street. Our bakery is at the first traffic lights on the corner of Maple Street and Redwood Avenue. You can't miss it. He's giving directions for Andrew to walk from the train station to the bakery. So this part shows that he is corresponding to this note. How could I forget your passion for photography? There is an archaeological site nearby that I know you will love. How could I forget your passion for photography? There is an archaeological site nearby that I know you will love. You will be able to get fantastic photos of the ancient ruins and the surrounding countryside is absolutely breathtaking. This part matches with this note as he is suggesting interesting places for Andrew to take some photographs. Plus, there are lots of other fun things to do in and around the town. Well, I have to rush off to the bakery now. Hope to hear from you soon. Bye for now, your friend, Mark. So, here's a summary of which sentences in the email correspond to Mark's notes. Is the wording in Mark's email exactly the same as in his notes? No. Does Mark add any extra comments or information to his notes? Yes, of course he did. He expanded his note in two or three sentences. When writing your reply, try to paraphrase, add reasons, comments, and or information and use expressions to show how you feel. What kind of language does Mark use? It's informal. Informal is a language you use when you talk to a friend. So now, I hope you've got a clearer understanding on how to write your response appropriately in a form of informal letter or email. In order to write a response, you need to use input that express certain functions. For example, to thank somebody, apologize, express enthusiasm, give suggestions, invite, accept or decline an invitation, express preference, and ask and give directions. Here's some of the examples. To thank. I would like or I want to thank you. Thanks for. Many thanks for. To apologize. I'm sorry that. I'm sorry about. I want to apologize for. My apologies for. Express enthusiasm. Wow, that's great! Wonderful idea! Fantastic news! I am or was happy, glad, pleased to hear that. It will be great too. I'm so excited that. I couldn't believe it when I read that. Give suggestions. Let's go. Why don't you or we? What do you think about... I suggest we should definitely I think it would be a good idea too. There is a nice 
place where you or we could go or can go. There is a nearby that you will love. To accept an invitation sounds brilliant, perfect, for sure. That would be great. Thanks for inviting me to. Thanks for asking me to join you. I would love to come to. How could I say no? Count me in. To decline an invitation? I'm sorry, but I have to. Maybe some other time. I'm afraid I can't come. I can't make it because... It was nice of you to invite me, but I've already made other plans. Unfortunately, I won't be able to make it or I'll have to let you down. We would have had a great time, but how to invite? I would like to invite you to... Would you like to come to... It would be great if you could come. How about... And I'm writing to invite you to this. Express preference. I'd rather... I would prefer... I think would be best. I don't care whether we do this or that. To ask for directions, how do I get from here to here? Where exactly is this place? What's the best way to get there? Can you tell me the way to? Give directions. Go straight on until you come to Walk, go past, towards, go up, down, along, to the street or road. Turn left or right at the crossroads, a traffic lights, stop sign or corner. Cross at the pedestrian crossing or footbridge. Let's do some practice in using these expressions or phrases. Write an appropriate response for each prompt. Would you like to go fishing next weekend? This is an invitation. Would you accept or decline the invitation? If you decline the invitation, you can say, I'm sorry, I can't because my parents are in town. Would you rather spend a long weekend in London or in a village in Wales? This is a suggestion. Now you need to express your preference. You can say, I think I'll take Wales because I'm sick and tired of big cities. How about taking the Eurostar to Paris and spending a couple of days there? This is also a suggestion, but without asking your preference. So if you agree, you can express your enthusiasm about the subject matter. Going to Paris is a great idea because I've always wanted to visit the Eiffel Tower. Next, you are having a party and have also invited a new classmate of yours. She doesn't know where you live. Give her directions from your school to your house. Remember, when you give directions, make sure you give a detailed explanation. For example, go down High Road for about 200 meters until you come to the traffic lights. Turn left into Regent Street, go past the supermarket and turn right into Hills Road. My house is opposite a bakery. And last one. You receive an email from your brother who's studying abroad. He wants to buy your parents' presents before he visits and has asked you for ideas. What do you suggest? I suggest you buy a silk tie for dad since he likes ties and a silk scarf for mom. Now, it's time for you to put into practice what you've learned just now. This is your writing task. You have arranged to go to Sydney, Australia to attend a three-week language course. Your friend from Australia has written to you. 
read your friend's email and the notes you have made. How are you? I'm so glad means you're happy you are coming to Sydney to do an English language course. I know that the college can provide accommodation, they can give you a place to stay. But I think it would be nicer if you stay with us. We have a spare room, an extra room, so there's nothing to worry about. So, what do you think? You will accept, so yes, thank you. I have some ideas about things we can do while you are here. A friend of mine has a house near Bondi Beach, so we could go and stay there for a weekend. How does that sound? Do you like the idea? Apart from that, my favourite baseball team, the Hawks, are playing. Would you like me to book tickets for their game? You will refuse this, decline. Another thing I would like you to know is if you have any food preferences, means food that you eat or don't eat, so I can let my mother know what to cook. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Write back as soon as you can. Best wishes, Lydia. Now, it's time to write an email to your friend using all your notes. What do you have to include in your reply? You will thank your friend, accept the invitation to Bondi Beach, decline the invitation to baseball game, and you will state if you have any food preference. Based on these outlines, write your email in 120 to 150 words. Do you still remember the layout of an email? Just to refresh your memory, take a look at this layout of an email. This layout will help you organize your writing into paragraphs. This is where should you put the subject. Subject is a brief phrase that indicates what the content of the email is. Here's the greeting. Put a comma after the name. Write in two or three paragraphs here. And lastly, sign off using your first name because this is an informal email. Here's some tips to write an informal letter or email based on prompts. First, read the prompts carefully and include all the points in the notes in your answer. Second, try to rephrase the notes given, add comments and information and use expressions to show how you feel. Next, use informal language and expressions. For example, well, of course, anyway, you know, you see, by the way, and short forms, I'm, I didn't. Organize your email in paragraphs and put related ideas in the same paragraph. Write in an appropriate style according to who the person you are writing to is and the tone of the input. So use the appropriate expressions or phrases we learned earlier. Use standard grammar and spelling conventions. Avoid forms such as wanna, see you later, etc. Aim at achieving a positive effect on the reader. Alright, Get ready with your pen and paper. Let's write the email now. Greet your friend with an appropriate informal greeting. How do you feel about your friend's invitation to stay with him or her and his or her family? Mention everything you want to include in your email. Don't forget to refer to the notes. For the main part, we will write two paragraphs. The first one, what do you think of his suggestion to spend a weekend at? Why do you find this is a good idea? What do you think of his suggestion to go to a baseball match? Why don't you like the idea? Do you have food preference? Are you a vegetarian or do you have food allergies? Use an appropriate set set 
freeze to end your email. State anything you want to emphasize. Use a signature ending and your first name below that. So now we can write a complete reply based on the outlines. When writing your reply, try to paraphrase, add reasons, comments or information and use expressions to show how you feel. Can you do it? I'm going to show you the reply I have written for Lydia. You can read and use this as a reference. Now, take a minute and read both emails from Lydia and the reply I have written for the response. Can you see how both emails correspond to each other? For the last part, I'm going to assign you a homework. Turn to page 79 on your KSSM Full Blast Form 4 textbook and do the writing task F. You can write the email in your book and show it to your teacher later. Now, that's all from me. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson as much as I do.